Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am doing three looks using the Natasha Denona Pastel Palette. If you haven't seen, it is this gorgeous pastel palette. I did do a full review if you are interested. So I did three very different looks with this palette. I got a better feel of the formulas. So if you want to see some looks for inspiration, obviously this is one of the looks, then just keep watching. All right, let's get into look number one. This is gonna be my split face look. So look number one and two are gonna be on different eyes. But for all of the looks today, I'm going to use my ABH eye primer. You wanna use a light base for pastels just to get the most out of them. This is one of my all time favorite primers for those pastel bases. Highly recommend this if you're looking for a base, but let's get into the beauty. I don't have any concealer or anything on so that we can clean up afterwards. We are gonna start off with Feather in the inner corner of my crease. So Feather is a nice, pretty pale, light lilac shade. And I'm gonna put that right here and you can see it builds up pretty quickly. At first application, I'm always like, oh, this is kind of sheer. And then as soon as you add that second coat, it's beautiful. So I'm just putting that all over the crease. I want to test a little bit more of Bubble, which is this kind of periwinkle shade. And we're gonna put this in the outer half now of my crease. And these two blend into each other so beautifully. So again, this one is requiring a lot of building up, honestly, more so than Feather. But once it's on there, it's on there. It's not one of those shades that really blends away and it is buildable, but it does take a little bit of extra time and patience and going back in the pan to get there. And I'm putting just a little bit on my outer corner, just like that. Something to remember is that this is a pastel palette. So you're really not going to get depth with this. Depth is not what I'm going for. All right, I wanna see how well we can pack on Zest. In my first try with this, it was pretty sheer, but I wanna try a flat shader brush to see how we can build this up. And ooh, with this brush, this is an Isom W21. She pigmented, way more pigmented than with a blending brush. Wow, okay, I definitely am having much more positive experiences with this. In the outer corner, I'm going to use just a little touch of Bora, which is that light purple shade, and I'm just gonna blend it from the green zest into bubble, which is the blue. Just like that, just a little hint to bring in some of Feather. Then I'm gonna go back into bubble just to make a seamless. Okay, on my finger, I'm gonna take a little bit of Limoncello, which is a shimmery yellow. I'm gonna put that right in the inner corner for a little bit of glow. And then I'm also gonna put that in the center of my lid, kind of where Bora and Zest meet. I'm gonna take just a little bit more of Feather just to get that to show up a little bit more vibrant. I'm gonna pop on some concealer and then we'll do the lower lash line together. So I just put a little bit of concealer underneath, nothing serious. So I wanna take Feather again, which is the light pinky shade, and I want this to kind of bleed out from underneath the lower lash line. I'm doing a very light sheer wash because I'm gonna put color over top it, but it will kind of peek through underneath all of the shadows that we're putting on top. Let's have Bubble be the main focus focus for the lower lash line, especially on the outer corner. And then inner lower lash line, we're going back into Zest, which has pleasantly surprised me. I did not love it the first time that I used it. I think using flat brushes really helps dig up the pigment. Okay, so here is the look so far. I'm gonna put a neon yellow eyeliner in the lower lash line and I will be back to show you the final look. Okay guys, with liner and lashes, do you see how this look really came together? I'm obsessed. I used the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in Extra Frosting, which is a very pastel yellow in the waterline. And then I used the shade Visuals as my liner. And then I also have Lashes Always in forever from the bridal collection 
And this is the look. I love this one. This one I think is my favorite so far that I've come up with because it's purple and blue. For look number two, there are two eyeshadows that I have not yet used in this palette, which are Bellini right here and Starlet. So we're going to use these two. And I'm going to start off with a little bit of Bellini. It's kind of a gorgeous transitional peach shade. And we're going to use this as our transition color. Next, I'm taking some of Starlet, which this is a duochrome shade. I'm taking it on an Esam W21 brush. I'm gonna tilt my head back and we are putting this on the outer half of my eyelid. Just like that. This is a starting point and both of these shades were absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Next, we're gonna take some of Illusion, which is kind of like a sheer duochrome shade, and we're going to fill in the inner half of the eyelid. This is an interesting, almost putty-like formula. It still is a powder, but it has some similarities that you'd find with a putty formula. And I'm putting that on the inner half. How pretty is that? And this is probably one of the most wearable looks that you can get in the palette if you stop right here, but we've got to amp it up. It is an Easter egg palette after all. So I'm starting off with some of Brisk right here, and I am going to pop this in the inner half of the lower lash line, just like this. We're gonna take some of Airy, which is a little bit more of a pastel baby blue, and I'm going to almost wing it out, just like this. And then you'll see this has a lot of pigment, so I'm gonna take it and create a little wing, just over the whole look. And I'm gonna build up, be very, very careful when you're doing this. We're gonna go back into Brisk, which is the one that's a little bit more seafoam green, and then finish it up in the inner corner. I'm gonna blend out the front here. I know this kind of look is not everybody's cup of tea. It is definitely not even mine, but I just wanted to show you how pigmented these are. Oh my goodness, that's crazy, right? I'm gonna brighten up the look a little bit with a little bit more of Illusion, and we're going to define right underneath the blue wing that I did. And the reason why I also decided to do a look like this was because Natasha was playing around with like using these almost as eyeliners as well and I wanted to see if it was possible. If I wanted something a little bit more defined, I'd probably go in with like a crayon underneath and then use these eyeshadows to set it, but I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with the opacity. Once we get liner and lashes, it will definitely look a lot more editorial. So let me pop those on and I will show you. Okay guys, here is the final look. This one is very, very different for me, but I had a lot of fun and this really, I feel, challenged the palette. So the key to this one was the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in Prance. It's this periwinkle shade that I used in the lower lash line and upper lash line and then I have the same Lily Lashes always and forever. So don't be afraid to challenge this palette. I think it proved to be great quality and that you can even without setting it or wetting it or putting anything underneath I still got a pretty defined line. So I mean I don't know that I love this look but it was a good way to test the palette. This is the second look. Okay guys so this is a look number three. My favorite look by far. <sighs> this is what I envisioned when I had this palette in my hands. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. First things first, we are going to dip into Airy, which is the baby blue. Airy is going into the inner third of my crease. And I'm finding with these shades, especially the ones that are more pastel, if you pat first and then blend, it does hold a little bit more opacity and just kind of lay down more color initially. So that way you can Work smarter, not harder. Next up, we're going into Brisk, which is kind of like this pastel green shade. And then Brisk is going into the center of the crease like so. So we have the blue to this minty green transition. And this shade does kind of fade a little bit, so you're probably gonna have to go through a couple of times just to add that color back in. And then finally, to fill in the rest of the crease, we are going into Tool, which is a mid-tone pink. And this shade holds a little bit more pigment than I thought. It is a cream to powder, but it still lays down pretty strong as you can see. So that's just gonna fill in the rest of our crease. And then as you can see, I'm placing just a little bit on the eyelid. 
it should look like that. I'm gonna take my favorite shade in the palette, which I have decided is dainty because it's so freaking glittery. I love it. And just to get a little extra punch as well as control, I'm gonna wet my brush. This is a Isam W21, which is great for a precise application. And really picking up a lot of product and laying it down. I'm just gonna pop this in the inner half of the eyelid. Do you see how beautiful and reflective that is? If you put this all over, mm, so this is just the most stunning shade. I wish she added more of this formula in the palette because it's so beautiful. Taking a clean Isam W21, I'm gonna do the same. I'm going into Mint Frost, which is kind of the same formula as Dainty, but maybe a touch less glimmery. I'm gonna soak my brush in this. And then I'm gonna wet it and I'm gonna fill in the rest of the eyelid. I know it's interesting that I'm putting the green in the outer part because the pink is right here and the green is in the front, but I'm looking for that opposition in this look. I think it looks really neat and a little bit more interesting. And then to blend the two shades on the lid together, I'm going into Duet. I'm not as crazy about this shade as I thought I would be. It's a little underwhelming. I wish it had a little bit more glimmer in it. Considering it is a duochrome, it could have been so much more fun if it had a little bit more oomph. But I'm just going to use the purple and green shift to kind of blend the two shades together. And it really does create nice harmony between the two shades. I'm going to take my wipe. And I'm gonna clean up any fallout from the glimmery shades as well as kind of create a small shape right here. Amazing. I'm gonna pop on a little bit of concealer. I've really enjoyed putting my foundation first just to get that clean, even base that helps inspire me to create looks. Doing my eye look and then going in with the concealer to kind of guide the shape of the eye look after. And that way I don't have to worry about fallout anymore. It's been order. I've been loving doing things. I'm taking a little bit of powder just to set underneath there. We are gonna go back into Airy, which is the baby blue, and I'm gonna run this pretty low along my lower lash line. Don't be afraid to build it up. And then to pull the entire look together, I'm going into Bora, which is a purple, and I'm going to put this on the outer half of my lower lash line. I'm gonna take just a little bit more, and I'm gonna kind of sneak it right into this outer corner. This is gonna add depth, and it's also gonna make everything look just a little bit more cohesive. And this is the eye look, isn't it so fun and pretty? It's giving me total cotton candy vibes. So let me put on some liner lashes and lips and I will show you the final look. So here is the finished look, look number three. This is what I'm going to wear to Target today. So the major things, I use the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in Icebreaker in my waterline. Perfect shade for this look. And then I use some of the Fenty Beauty Perpetrator Purple Liner as my liner. I put a black over top, but the purple is seeping through. And then lashes are Ardell Eco Lashes for 45. So that is the final look. So I did want to come back and give updated thoughts of this palette now that I have used it more. And you guys, the quality on this I think is really, really good. For a pastel palette, it is very, very easy to use. So typically with pastels that I've experienced in the past, they've been very, very chalky. And even if they give you a lot of pigment to begin with, they blend away into dust and you have to keep reapplying and you can't over blend. The one thing I will say about these is that you can definitely tell that they are high quality. While they might be a little bit sheer, they definitely build and they don't blend away. So if you are into pastel shades, I think that this is a very high quality pastel formula. Now for me, this is when it comes down to personal preference. It honestly is not my favorite Natasha Denona palette. Honestly, the pastels in here, they don't really inspire me. I, I even had a little bit of a creative block when it came to creating looks in this palette. I don't know what was up with me, but I didn't love all the looks that I created. I really do love the one that I'm wearing now, but I don't look at this palette and see a billion different looks that I can create, which is a way that I feel about a lot of other palettes. This is a palette for me. I'm definitely gonna dig into Tropic and Circo Loco to create other looks with, just because I do prefer a little bit more depth. And if you're looking for depth, then a pastel palette probably isn't for you. But yeah, I mean, I really do like this palette. I don't think there's a dud in here. I think the formulas are great, but it certainly is not going
going to be everybody's cup of tea. A great way to look at this palette also is just as a wash kind of palette. So you can grab a couple shades from here and just get a simple washed look all over the lid for the springtime. I think it's a great spring palette and I think it's great to incorporate with other palettes. So there we have it, you guys. That was my three looks, one palette. Let me know which look was your favorite, number one, two, or three. If you pick this palette up, let me know how you're feeling about it. Are you enjoying it? Are you having fun creating looks? I definitely will continue playing with this though because I know there are so many more looks that I can create. I just gotta look for more inspiration. But that is all I have for today's video. If you guys aren't subscribed to my channel already, make sure you do so and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.